opposition, Bill Shorten. Mr Shorten, good morning to you. Good morning, John. Economic credibility in politics is everything, and yours is still an issue, as the ALP is still, in voters' minds, regarded as a party of economic recklessness. You've done nothing so far to suggest that you'll be any different. No, I don't think either assumptions right there. First of all, we talk about Labor's legacy. When Labor went out of power, we had a AAA credit rating from all three of the global or international credit rating agencies. A legacy of the past, but you were spending more than the government was earning. But your point when you opened was that there was some big economic cloud over Labor, and I'm just setting the record straight. Uh, only eight countries in the world have a AAA rating. Even John Howard, uh, when he was Prime Minister, never secured the AAA credit rating from around the world. So I just make that point without belabouring it. But if things had kept going in that way, it would have been lost. And there's nothing that you've said that I'm aware of so far while you've been opposition leader to suggest that you would take a more rigorous and sustainable approach to economic management. Well, let me reassure your listeners, there are choices in this country. And first of all, the Abbott budget, the Abbott hockey budget, is dreadfully unfair on lots of people of middle and lower income backgrounds. I'm not asking you about theirs. I'm asking you about yours. But it's all comparative. So you've got one choice, which is the Abbott hockey liberal budget, which is dreadfully unfair, and they never told us about it before the last election. We've offered up uh, sensible savings to the government. The first one would be to get rid of their paid parental leave scheme, which is an extraordinary act of unnecessary ego where millionaires can get $50,000, yet you've got pensioners worrying about cuts to their own very modest incomes. We voted. We voted at an election. That was one of their policies. They got a majority. They can implement it. But what? I'll come to their budget and we'll dissect it in a moment, but what's your alternative big picture view of how you run an economy so that it is sustainable and heading towards a surplus? It's all about growth. It's all about skills. It's all about infrastructure. Australia is a country of 23 million people in a much larger world. If we want to succeed as a nation and we want to succeed as a community and a society, you can either take the low road of tax and cut and sell off or you can take the approach that says we want to grow the economy and the best way to grow the economy is fund education. Long after the mineral prices have ebbed and their prices have gone up and down, if we spend resources making sure that our kids and our adults get the best possible education and skills in the world, if we invest in science and innovation, if we invest in productive infrastructure and if we have a good safety net underpinning it, so there you go, there's a trifecta, education, which costs science huge and innovation. Sums of money. Science, science and innovation, innovation there's a $20 billion dollar science fund you've said you don't think should be built. Science and infrastructure. Well, I'll just answer your first question, then I'll go to your second one. Education. If, if you, people want to know what Labor stands for this morning, good education, becoming a science and innovation nation, good infrastructure with a fair safety net underneath. In terms of this medical research fund, that the future fund that the government's proposed, you know, I think that's a shabby con job. What, first of all, in the early years, there's not much money going into it. But secondly, and much more importantly, if a nation believes that science and research is important, which I certainly do, then what you do is you fund it out of consolidated revenue. You don't tax the sick and rob the Medicare system. You don't solve the challenges of research in the future by robbing poor people, by robbing sick people, by just making uh, the whole medical system two-tiered like we see in America. Uh, the fuel excise, you say you're against it. Why? I would have thought it was strong Labor policy, whether you're in a partnership with the Greens or not, to have a tax on fuel and uh, inde to index it for inflation. Well, just again, thinking about your listeners this morning who are battling the wet roads on Melbourne's in Melbourne, uh, my observation is why on earth is the Abbott government increasing the cost of living pressure on families? Because it's a good way to tax fuel. Well, I don't agree. I think that uh, the contrary is that making it harder for families to make ends meet, especially when you've got the massive cuts to family payments, when you're attacking the fixed income pensioners, when you're attacking Medicare. It's a cheap populist measure and it's flying in the face of every Everything Labor governments have stood for in the past. Oh no, I can tell you another thing that Labor stands for. We believe that uh, cost of living pressures are real, families living fortnight to fortnight. It is not the job of the national budget to stuff up family budgets. High income earners, a deficit levy <coughs> on high income earners. Do you or don't you support it? It's quite ambiguous what you and your shadow treasurer Chris Bowen have been saying over the last week. First of all, the Increase, when you say a, a deficit levy, let's call it what it is. This is an increase to income tax levels. A temporary tax, call it anything, but do you support well, it or not? Sounds like you've been reading out of the Tony Abbott Weasel words book. It's not a temporary uh, deficit levy, it's a new income tax, which they said they wouldn't do, do before the last... Do you support it or not? Well, I'm just setting up some issues that take longer than five seconds to answer. 
first of all, this is a broken promise and it's increasing people's taxes. However, uh, we have bigger priorities to fight. We'll have more to say about this deficit levy in coming days. So you're going to support it? Well, we've got bigger priorities. Just so Australians understand what Labor's thinking because they get to hear what the Abbott government's thinking incessantly. We believe, on one hand, it's a broken promise, but on the other hand, the broken promise is attacking the pensioners, attacking Medicare, attacking the petrol excise, attacking kids going to university from modest backgrounds. They are bigger issues for us to fight along with family payments. So a Labor government will support a tax on the rich? Well, unfortunately... It's hardly a headline, is it? It's astonishing that a Conservative government's even trying it. Unfortunately, we're not the government. No, but, but you'll support, you. you will support this measure and let it go through the Senate. We haven't got to a final position, but I certainly just say to Australians who are worried about the budget, Labor's going to fight it as its top priorities the attacks on Medicare, the attacks on pensioners, the attacks on the petrol and cost of living, the attacks on people trying to send their kids to uni or get a proper education after secondary school. Uh, deregulation of university fees is one of the key features of the uh, post-budget economic horizon. Uh, do you support the deregulation of university fees at all? No, our view is that this is an ill-conceived policy because it's increasing the debts which um, will be put on students and their parents. The big thing from Gough Whitlam onwards is that we believe in making university accessible to all. We do not believe... You know, this shows the sheer lunar hypocrisy of the Abbott government. They say they're all in favour of research, but they're taking money out of universities. What have you offered Clive Palmer for support to stop and block measures in the Senate? Nothing. Have you met with Clive Palmer? We've spoken to Clive Palmer, but uh, we've had no transactional negotiations whatsoever. What's he asking for? Well, we haven't got down to that level of detail. The budget came down last Tuesday, and um, like most Australians, we're all just trying to work out quite... I think we've all been taken by surprise quite how mean and unfair these attacks are. The other thing is Tony Abbott made himself the patron saint of being the politician who would not break promises. He lied before the election. He's done it willfully and systemically. Politicians do that apparently. The oh, carbon tax has no, killed no, John. The carbon tax has killed not, John. Let's not just have throwaway lines. Tony Abbott. Well, your side of politics, when in office, said all sorts of things that then they either changed their minds on or lied to the electorate about, and now we're seeing the same sorts of John, political I've, strategies. I've heard the replay of your very interview where you got Tony Abbott to say when Tony, you know, he was making promises before the election. You said that, oh, well, you can be one of these politicians who says there's a crisis after the event and therefore you've got to change your promises or break them. He said, no, he wouldn't be. This guy um, held himself out to be something special and something different. He's lied. And what's worse about his lies, they're hurting millions of real people and Labor's not going to stand up. We're not going to let that go through to the keeper. We have to get to callers. A carbon tax has dealt with and killed the <coughs> careers of two of your predecessors as Labor leaders. Are you committed to a carbon tax if in future you do get your hands on the levers? I'm committed to real action on climate change, not this Tony Abbott uh, climate sceptics policy where you pay big polluters to pollute. We believe that there should be uh, a mechanism which uh, tackles the challenge of climate change uh, and we will, re we will reveal all our policies in good time before the next election. But there's a big difference between Labor and Liberal. We think that climate change is real. Do you concede the boats have stopped? Uh, in terms of uh, the boat policy, I can see that the government is, is addicted to a culture of secrecy. You know, they've got this Cambodia deal, which they won't tell anyone about. They won't tell anyone, they won't release their reports about what happened on Manus Island. So, Do you concede the boats have stopped? Well, I, what I concede is that this government has got an approach which is uh, totally different in terms of its addiction to secrecy. Well, let's just wait and see how the rest of the policies are going. So you won't even concede that what was one of the key planks in voters abandoning support for Julia Gillard and Kevin Rudd, that that's been well managed by Scott Morrison and Tony Abbott's government. I'm not going to give this government too much credit when I'm dealing with the implications of their budget. I'm sorry. This is a government who lied their way into office. They're fundamentally trying to create a permanent underclass in this country. And Labor will fight them. And I know that some people say Labor shouldn't just oppose the Abbott government. Well, this government is doing things which are obnoxious and unfair. Do you support gay marriage? I voted to uh, legalise it. Do you support voluntary euthanasia being introduced in Australia? No. Under any circumstances? Well, I think that the current system, uh, of, uh, and for instance, represented by the majority opinion, uh, I believe... There's, first of all, let's, let's not rush this euthanasia point because it's an incredibly you know, complex matter. 
Uh, what I think about euthanasia on one hand is that there's a spectrum of views. What I believe has been working reasonably well is uh, some of the advanced care guidelines which Australia has, and I think they're some of the best in the world, empowering clinicians, empowering doctors to deal with their patients in an informed manner and getting the discretion of the doctors who are treating patients, that's what works best in my opinion. If you can't get your internal reforms of the Labor Party through the Victorian State Conference, your home base, what hope have you got of doing it nationally? Labor will rebuild. We've started that process. We've got thousands of more members than we've had previously. That's the headline. My question specifically well, is about if you, you can't get it through the Victorian State Conference, what hope is there? Well, we are getting our processes through. They didn't go through? Uh, yes, some of them did, and some of them are going to take more work. John, Rome wasn't built in a day. Labor's determined to rebuild because we want to be a stronger party. We're getting thousands more members joining the party. I'd say to anyone who's listening who's interested in Australian politics from a progressive point of view, the Labor Party 